Hey, David Gann here. I've got another question in section 5.1. We're going to be identifying drift speed of charge carriers and solving problems using the drift speed equation. Question 8, part A. Copper has a molar mass of 63.5 grams. That means one mole of copper has a mass of 63.5 grams and a density of 8,960 kilograms per cubic meter. Part A, we want to calculate the volume of one mole of copper, and it all comes down to the density. The density is a measure of the mass per unit volume. So if we want to know the volume, that's going to be the mass over the density. In one mole of copper, there are 63.5 times 10 to the negative 3 kilograms, and the density is 8,960 kilograms per cubic meter. I converted grams to kilograms so that I could have the same units in both numbers. When I do this division, I get 7.09 to three significant figures, cubic meters, the volume of one mole of copper. Part B, if each atom of copper contains one free electron, calculate the number of free electrons per unit volume of copper. And this is that symbol N. N is the electron density, and it's the number of electrons, or free electrons, per region of volume. Can't spell region. If I have one mole of copper, I know it will take up this volume. And if I have one mole of copper, then I know that I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper, each of which will have one electron. So what we'll do is we'll assume one mole of copper. And it doesn't really, how much, it doesn't really matter how much copper we assume because we're looking for the density, and that should be independent of the amount. But if we make that assumption, then we can say there's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd free electrons. And the copper will occupy a space of 7.09 cubic meters. Running that calculation gives us 8.49 times 10 to the 28 electrons per cubic meter. Part C says, calculate the drift velocity of the electrons along a one millimeter diameter copper wire carrying a current of one amp. So if we're looking for the drift velocity, we're going to go straight to the drift velocity equation, which tells us that the current in a conductor is the electron volume density times the cross-sectional area of the conductor times the drift velocity times the charge of the charge carriers which would be the charge of an electron. We want to re rearrange this for the uh, drift velocity, so that's going to be the current divided by the electron volume density multiplied by the cross-sectional area multiplied by the charge of an electron. We know we're dealing with one, uh, was it amp or milliamp? One amp of current. The electron charge density we calculated to be 8.49 times 10 to the uh, 28th per cubic meter. It's electrons per cubic meter, but electrons aren't a unit, so it's just number of things per cubic meter, it's per cubic meter. The cross-sectional area, well, we're talking about a wire here with a circular cross-section, so if the diameter is one millimeter, then the radius is going to be half a millimeter. And the cross-sectional area will be the area of that circle. So that's going to be pi r squared. So there's r, 5 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared. I'll we'll put the units in. Or not. We'll put the units in. Square that. And then finally, the charge of an electron. 1.6 times 
times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. All right. We know everything in the equation, even though it looks a little muddy. We can punch all of that into the calculator. And when we do, we get 9.4 to two significant figures. We only had two, right? Oh, it looks like we might even only have one in this question. But one's, one's a little extreme. We'll stick to two. Two significant figures, 9.4 times 10 to the negative 5 meters per second.